Would you go to 1 Corinthians, please, the sixth chapter? 1 Corinthians 6. We've been on a series for a while now that we're calling the Temple of the Holy Spirit. And if you haven't been with us for the earlier parts, they're available. You can go online to our website and, and get them on no charge. And it is, I believe, a very significant word. Let's begin again in 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, and I'm going to read the uh, Amplified. 1 Corinthians 6, 12, Amplified. He said, uh, everything, verse, verse 12, everything is permissible, allowable, lawful for me. But not all things are helpful, good for me to do, expedient, profitable. Everything is lawful for me, but I will not become the slave of anything or be brought under its power. He goes on to say, food is for the stomach and the stomach for food, but God will finally end the functions of both and bring them to nothing. The body's not intended for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God has raised the Lord to life and will also raise up us by his power. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives within you? Everybody said out loud, I do acknowledge, I do acknowledge my, body, my, body, my body, my body is the temple, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He said, which you have received from God. You are not your own. Now, you will hear that a lot nowadays. People say, well, it's my body. And whose business is it? What I do with my body. Well, that's not true if you are a Christian. Right. Now, if you're not a Christian, yeah, do whatever you want to, but you're not saved either. But if you are a Christian, it is not just your body to do with whatever you choose. You, if, if you're a Christian, you are not your own Lord. You have a Lord. His name is? Jesus. That's right. Said uh, verse 20, you, you were bought with a price, so then honor God and bring glory to him in your body. Now, this was in, in response to what he mentioned in chapter 5. So back up to the fifth chapter and the first verse. Now, this is the Spirit of God uh, writing through Paul and uh, to the church at Corinth, which is a part of the same church we're a part of. People talk about, well, the early church like it's a different church. But no, it's the same church. We're a part of that same church that the church of Corinth, church of Ephesus, church of Colossae, Thessalonica, same church, same church. And they had issues in the church then, just like there's issues in the church now. And one of them, one of the issues was uh, sexual issues. Verse 1 says, he said, it's actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, impurity of a sort that's condemned and does not occur even among the heathen. For a man that has his own father's wife. And if you, if you read 2 Corinthians together with 1 Corinthians, you'll find indications that his father was also alive and in the church there at Corinth. And that through whatever uh, had happened, he, he gets involved with his stepmother. And now they are a couple in the church, doing things in the church. And so uh, verse 2 says, you're proud and arrogant and ought rather to mourn until the person that's done this is removed from your fellowship and your midst. Now, that's what he was talking about in the next chapter when he said they were saying, and, and actually it appears that they were mis 
misquoting and misapplying something he had said about not being under the law. And they, they're saying everything's okay. Every, everything's okay. Basically, nothing is off limits. Now, is that an issue today? Do people think like this today? And so you'll find that folks say, well, yeah, we're not under the law and don't try to put any do's and don'ts on me. Y'all are too quiet. <laughs> are we reading the New Testament? Yes. Is anything off limits? Huh? Or is everything okay? Now, see, that's what they're saying is everything's okay. And they were even proud about how open-minded and enlightened they were, which was a distortion and a perversion of grace. Jude, if you want to turn there, Jude uh, foretold this, describes this. In Jude, just one chapter and the third verse, he said, Beloved, I gave all diligence to write to you of the common salvation. It was needful, I'm reading the King James here, for me to write to you and exhort that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. Everybody say, Fight, fight. For, the for the faith. Fight for faith. Right. Fight for the faith. So, verse 4 says, there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of, of our God into lasciviousness. Turning grace into lasciviousness. Well, now, that's a King James word, isn't it? When's the last time you used that word in a sentence? <laughs> Just in your normal conversation. Lasciviousness. Well, the word just simply means no restraint or lack of control. It's actually where we get the word incontinent from. Incontinence, which means you don't have control. And, uh, but this is not of just control of your bladder. This is control of your life. That there is just no restraint. Nothing is off limits. Uh, nothing is bad. Everything's okay. In fact, you know, there, there's so many songs and there's so many books and that basically, if it makes you happy, how can it be wrong? Hmm? Well, that's, that's this exactly what, what he was saying to them. All things are lawful. Right? And hey, it's my body and if it makes you happy, then it can't be bad. That's not true. Is there good and bad? Yes. Is it just up to the individual to decide what's good and what's bad? Is it everybody just has to decide for themselves? Or is there independent standard that is unchanging Right and wrong, good and bad. Yes. And that's what the law was and is. And there's been a lot of confusion about what people call the Old Testament and about the law. In fact, I, I'm not even using so much that term Old Testament anymore. That's a, that men gave that title to these writings. And Old Covenant is in there, but all of the writings of what people call the Old Testament is not just about the covenant or the first covenant. There's so much more. And all of it is the eternal Word of God. Amen. And if God ever said something was good, it's good. It was good. It is good. It'll always be good and right. If He ever said something was bad, and wrong. It was bad. It is bad. It will always be bad. 
So to just discount the whole, what people call the Old Testament, say, oh, that's Old Testament. You see why I'm saying I'm not using that term so much? There's no such thing as Old Word of God. No. There is an Old Covenant and a New Covenant. But uh, Genesis, for instance, is not Old Word of God. The Psalms, the Proverbs, the prophets. Is that right? None of it is old. Why? Because like Jesus said, and he pointed this out to me recently. um, He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the New Testament. (laughs) Oh, you caught that right up. What did he say? What did he say? Put it up there, Luke 4, 4. Luke 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Luke, Luke 4, 4, by every word of God. Somebody say every word of God. But what if you never read what they call the Old Testament? How much of the word of God is that? Well, you're certainly not living by it. Don't even know it. Not even aware of it. And when he said this, there was no New Testament. Is that right? When he said this, New Testament hadn't been written. No, do not, do not look at what people call the Old Testament as an inferior word of God to the new. There's no such thing as an old no longer applicable, out of date, passed away word of God. Hmm? He said heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. And why am I talking like this? Because is there right and wrong? Is there good and evil? Well, see, according to them, it's up to the individual to decide. And they basically just have to decide what's right for them. And if you're enlightened enough with grace, then everybody understands that you do you. (laughs) Huh? And you got to live by your truth. Hmm? This is popular, right? And I'm going to do me. (laughs) And, you know, live by my truth. And who am I to say that uh, your truth isn't truth. Well, God is God to say, right? right? And if he says it's wrong, it don't matter what you say about it, it's wrong. Is that right? And if he says it's right, it doesn't matter how many people say it's not right anymore, it's still right. This is something we must have as our anchor. I know uh, Brother Copeland beginning of this year, he had a word from the Lord. He said about let God's word be make God's word first place and final authority. And the Lord's been saying the same thing to me over and over and over again. Said out loud, make God's word. Now it already is eternal, but you're talking about making it this in your life, giving it this place in your life. Said out loud, make God's word. First place place. and final authority. authority. Well, now you're not going to do that if you don't even know what he said, right? right. right. If you don't even know, which is why all around Faith Life Church, everybody reads their chapter every day, Monday, huh? Now you can read as much in addition to that as you like, but that's our, 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 our basic that all of us do together. Uh, go with me, if you would, to uh, um, Isaiah, the fifth chapter. You see it here in the Word of God, in Jude and other places, and we, uh, we see it around us that people have perverted grace to a teaching that everything is okay. Nothing is, is really wrong. Everything's okay. But 
that's what the law was given to reveal. Was so that people would know that sin was sin. Now the problem with the law was not the law itself. It was that people didn't keep the law. And today you should not be trying to keep the law to be saved. You should not be trying to keep the law to be righteous because you're going to come short. Hmm? But that doesn't mean the law is wrong. Right? Doesn't mean the law is not right. And for instance, with this thing about the man uh, getting involved with his uh, stepmother and them winding up a couple and married, there's scripture, plain scripture in Leviticus 18 and, and Deuteronomy 27 and other places. I mean, specific verses that, that, that forbade uh, marrying, being involved with your stepmother. I mean, specific verses. But see, the church at Corinth had been enlightened. They got a, a, a newer, later revelation <laughs> that now you can ignore the word, especially the Old Testament. You can just ignore all that because now we're under grace. <laughs> no. How many think it's still wrong to marry your sister? Yes. Huh? Now see, you said, yeah, that, that ain't right. <laughs> well, okay. Why are you so quick? What if it's your truth? Huh? And, and it makes you happy. Because we're not under the law. Then everything's okay. Well, where do you draw the line? What is nothing off limits? <laughs> no, the the word's still right. Is that right? People say, "Well, you know, thank God we don't have to try to keep the Ten Commandments anymore." You know, thank God. What do you mean? What's wrong with the Ten Commandments? Huh? When did God ever say, you know, all those things, you know, things I wrote in stone and all that? Just forget about all that, you know. I, I used to be pretty hard nosed, but you know, I've lightened up some now, and I'm just. Uh uh. uh, -uh. How many think it's still right, don't have any other gods before Him? Just as right as it ever was. Don't murder. Still right. Don't lie. Still right. Is that right? Don't steal. Still right. Still right. Don't go after somebody else's wife or husband. Still right. Still right. Don't get involved with your stepmother. Still, how many understand? You got to override your conscience as a Christian to do that. Because something's telling you, uh-uh, no. You don't even have to know the scriptures. The Holy Spirit will let you know, no, you need to look somewhere else. No, leave your daddy's wife alone. Right? See, that's what the Spirit of God was saying through Paul. The heathen don't do this. The heathen don't do this, he said. This is not acceptable among the heathen. The, the, un, the ungodly were shaking their heads. Good. Can you believe the church people? Is there right and wrong? Yes. There is. Is there good and evil? Yes. There is. Did y'all find Isaiah 5? Boy, you're ahead of me. Um, he's talking about, I'm moving a little bit too quick. While you got that, put up on the screen for us Psalm 50. This is a big subject. And we haven't heard all that much about it because people are afraid to talk about it because there are plenty of places you can go where people will tell you that whatever you want to do is, is okay. And so preachers are concerned about saying things like what we're saying, but you know the truth will do what for you? 
It'll make you free. And lies, even though you can continue to do it your way, you're not going to be free. We're, you're not free to sin. The scripture says uh, of whatever uh, you're overcome with, you're brought in bondage. Sin is bondage. God's not against you having fun. The wages of sin is death. He's against you being destroyed. In Psalm 50 and verse 14, well, um, verse 16, he said, to the wicked God says, what have you to do to declare my statutes or that you should take my covenant in your mouth? God doesn't like the way a lot of people talk about him. He would rather they didn't mention him at all than talk about him the way they are. And what you're going to see here, it's, it'll be more obvious in the next couple of verses. He said, because seeing you hate instruction and you've cast my words behind you. And yet they're talking about God. He said, when you saw a thief, you consented with him. You've been partaker with adulterers. You give your mouth to evil. Your tongue frames deceit. You, speak and, uh, you sit and speak against your own brother. You slander your own mother's son. Now notice verse 21. These things have you done, and I kept silence, and you thought I was altogether such an one as yourself. You thought I was like you because lightning didn't just blast you. And I didn't say anything. And I didn't interrupt you. And I didn't correct you. The, uh, another translation says, you thought I was just like you, but I'll rebuke you. The NET says, when you did these things, I was silent, so you thought I was exactly like you. There has been, and this is not new, and every generation has done this, the reinvention of God. You will hear people say all manner of things about who God is, what he's like, what he's okay with, and what's not a big deal to him. And that doesn't mean any of it is right. Because what people are doing is they're, make, they're trying to make God like they are. He said, you thought I was like you. But to the wicked, he also said, my ways are higher than your ways. Is that right? My thoughts are higher. How are you going to know anything about his ways? His thoughts. These words are his thoughts. They reveal his ways. So anything that's contrary and contradicting to his words and thoughts cannot be God. Amen. Cannot be him. Cannot be the way he is. And he does not change. Amen. He said, I am the Lord. I change not. Scripture said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Hallelujah. Did you find Isaiah? Now he had said in verse 20, Isaiah 5, 20, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil and put darkness for light and light for darkness, and put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. See, why were the saints at Corinth puffed up? About what? Well, see, they were embracing these other lifestyles. They were embracing. The man said, well, you know, uh, I prayed about it and my stepmother prayed about it and we just felt like the Lord said it's okay. Yeah, but Leviticus said it's not. 
Yeah, but that's Old Testament. Huh? Well, when did God change his mind about it? When did he say, you know, I said that, but that was a little harsh. I wasn't taking into consideration, you know, all these things that had developed in these last few millennia. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Is there right and wrong? Is there good and evil? Yeah. Yeah. And it's not just what you say it is or what I say it is. Huh? It's what he has already said. Does not change. Say it out loud. Woe, Woe to, them to them that call evil good, call evil good. And, good evil. and good evil and put darkness for light, darkness for light. and light for, darkness. light for darkness. Is there right and wrong? Yes. Yeah. Should you mix them up? Is it okay to mix them up? You know, uh, one verse said, uh, don't add to his words, lest he reprove you, lest he rebuke you. Do not add to what he said. If he said it's wrong, then you say, well, that, what he said is correct. It's wrong. Yeah, but no buts, period. In the discussion. He said it, that's it. Now see, uh, people don't like that. And uh, we, we live in a society, and, and it's, it's always been that way. It's just been... Uh, you know, expressed to different degrees, but uh, Jesus was not received when he came. In fact, he was rejected and he was hated. Is that true? Go to John 15. Are you a Christian? What does that mean? That means everybody's going to love you. Huh? Because you're a Christian. True or not true? Actually, the Lord said they wasn't going to love you. <laughs> if you're going to be His and follow Him. John 15, 18. He said, if the world hates you, you know it hated me. Before it hated you. So you're in some good company. Hmm? Now you know, uh, uh, don't turn there, but Luke 6, 26 says, Woe to you when all men will speak well of you. <laughs> For so did their fathers to the false prophets. That means you're in company with false prophets. When everybody likes your preaching. You so easy to get along with. And you don't offend anybody. Uh -huh. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Everybody likes you. <laughs> that would incline us to think you are a false prophet. <laughs> this is fun, huh? <laughs> he said uh, in James 4.4, 4, he said, you adulterers and adulteresses, don't you know that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whoever will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. People say, well, why can't we all just get along? Because <laughs> we can't. Because some people are of their father, the devil. And other folks have been born again and are of their father, God. And that is the polar opposites of good and evil. Amen. And they ain't never getting along. Yes, there is no salvation or redemption for the devil. And those that choose to reject God and be his enemy, there's only one other camp to be in. Now that doesn't mean you've got to go around and try to force your beliefs off on somebody else. And it doesn't mean you've got to judge other people. But what you must not do is call evil good. Huh? What you cannot do, if you're going to be a believer, if you're going to be a witness for light and right and truth, and you don't want to comfort somebody as they rush towards hell. Huh? Blaspheming God. Speaking evil about the Bible. 
I mean, if you do care about them, you'll tell them the truth, even if they don't want to hear it, even if it makes them mad, even if they don't receive it. Now, you don't just keep trying to push it, you know. If they don't want to hear it, they don't want to hear it. But what's happening is the world is doing its best to push its beliefs on you and force you to adapt to things that are contrary to the Word of God. And with the devil, there is no live and let live. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. It, it's convert or die. When I say convert, convert to his stuff, which is everything's okay. And you should support everything. Verse 19. Well, verse 18, John 15, 18. If the world hates you, you know it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Hates you. Remember the word I said to you, the servant's not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they'll keep yours also. But all these things will they do to you for my name's sake because they know not him that sent me. They don't know God, even though a lot of people are talking about God. They've tried to recreate God in their image. They're telling us God's like them, and it's a lie. He said, if I had not come and spoken to them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. And see, that, that is the issue. You even say the word sin. And people go off. Huh? You even imply something might not be acceptable or okay. And uh, over in John 7, 7, you see something. This is, this is eye-opening. This, this, so many answers right here. John 7, 7, Jesus said these were his own brothers that didn't believe in him at this point. Now apparently later on, after the resurrection, they came to believe. But at this point, he said, the world cannot hate you. At that point, they weren't believers. But me, it hates. What cause did they have to hate Jesus? What cause? He tells you. It hates me because I testify of it that the works thereof are what? Evil. Evil. And that is what makes people so mad they will want to kill you. That is why Cain killed Abel. When there were only what? Four people on the planet? The first murder that ever occurred. The Bible said, what was it in 1 John 3? Cain uh, killed his, his brother. And why did he, sl wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brothers were right or righteous. Why did he kill him? Because his brother's acts and gift and all the things he did sh were good and right, and that contrast showed how far off Cain was, and he wasn't willing to repent, and it made him so furious, he wound up in a fit of rage, killing his own brother. And this is the answer. Why people get so mad if you even act like you're not going to condone Huh? Or say it's okay. Or say at least say it's okay for you to do. Hmm? Why did John the Baptist get executed? <laughs> Anybody remember that? John the Baptist. Herod liked John. He enjoyed hearing him speak. 
But he, I don't know what was going around in the water over there, but he stole his brother's wife. Is that right? He took his brother's wife. Well, there's a verse in Leviticus about that too. Is that right? Don't take your brother's wife. Is that still bad? Yes. Getting involved with your brother's wife? Yes. Still wrong? Yes. Yeah, but what if you just fell in love? No. Huh? No. I mean, you didn't mean for it to happen. <laughs> but you know, you can't help who you love. Yes, you can. Huh? Where's that verse at? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Now you're laughing, but see, this thing about you got to be who you are and you can't help who you love, these are replacements. These are beliefs that are, they're they're actually traditions. We think of tradition as an old thing, but nothing's older than the truth of God. So these are Johnny-come-lately ideas. (laughs) Is that right? They'd say, hey, I know all that's in there, but you know, that don't apply to us anymore. And that's all past. You're saying God changed. When did he change? When did he change? And so uh, John the Baptist called Herod out. He said, it's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And that's what got him killed. Why? Herodias hated him. Hated him because of that. And she, you know, she couldn't just get Herod to kill him. Herod didn't want to kill him. And so, you know, they came up with that plan through her daughter. You remember all that stuff? You see how conniving the enemy is, man. He, evil. Evil. Why? Because somebody dared to say it's not okay. Uh huh. Hate, rage, murder. That's obviously the devil, isn't it? He comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. And Jesus said this. Look at it again. He said, John 7 7, that the world hates me. And that is sad because. He left glory. Didn't he? To come save the worst of the worst. Is that right? And everybody, and he came and even to his own, and his own rejected him and received him not. And the world hated him. Hated him. Why? He said, because... I'm going to paraphrase a little bit because I won't tell them that their wrong things are okay. I won't tell them that their evil things are acceptable. I testify of it that the works are evil. Why? Because God said it was evil centuries and millennia ago. Is that right? He laid out what's right, what's wrong. That has never changed. It never will change. What's good, what's evil. And if you call evil good, you have unhooked your wagon from him. Is that right? Because he is not God. He's not a man that he should lie or that he should repent. The Ten Commandments are not going to change. Is that right? Good and evil is not going to change. Now that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean you go around and get in people's face and judge them. Because you've also messed up. Is that right? Have you ever done something that was not good, that was bad? Sure you have. So no, this is not about judging anybody. But we cannot jump on the wagon and say something that is plain scripture God said is wrong. Amen. And we say, well, okay, but now today under grace, no, no, no big deal. We cannot do that. We cannot do that. Brother uh, Billy Graham, who's gone home to be with the Lord now, 
he said something uh, I thought was just, man, it was the wisdom of God coming through all of his years of ministry and experience. Uh, somebody was asking him about the current church before he left. And he said, well, he said, uh, he said some are, are preaching what I call, well, he said, some are, are not preaching the gospel. They're preaching what I call easy believism. Man, that said it. Easy believism. And he said they are so concerned. They're always doing these uh, uh, polling type things, trying to see, you know, who wants what. They're so concerned they're going to offend any and everybody except God. How many think that is wisdom? Is that wisdom? I respected that so much. I wrote that down. That was etched in my thinking. So concerned about offending and upsetting every in any group except offending God, being wrong in his sight. Well, you're in the world, but you're not of this world. You're in a different family. Is that right? And you're not your own Lord. And even your body's not your own. Is that right? Somebody say, I have a Lord. Stand on your feet and say it. Stand on your feet and say it. Say it out loud. I have a Lord. His name is Jesus. I'm not my own Lord. I'm not in charge of my own life. It's not up to me to decide what's truth, what's good. What's evil? evil. I must believe believe what he has said. said. His word word is truth, truth. forever settled, settled. everlasting truth truth. that will never change. change. And I will will conform, conform. not to the ungodly world, but I will yield to his word. Oh, Father, we thank you so much. We thank you so much. Thank you so much. Lord, we don't know who's in the crowd or who's watching online, but uh, no one should wait another moment before confessing Jesus as Lord in this dangerous, evil-filled world. Uh, So move on everyone that should and prompt them and urge them and draw them as only you can, we ask in Jesus' name. So uh, either confess, affirm, or reaffirm your faith in the living Master, the living Savior. Say it out loud, I believe in God, God. Creator Creator of heaven and earth. earth. I I believe in His Son. Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the only Savior, that he died on the cross, paid for my sins, and has been raised from the dead, free from sin, alive right now, King of kings, Lord of lords, soon to come again. Jesus, Jesus, you are my Savior. savior. I confess you you as my Lord. Lord. Thank you you for saving me. me. Whatever you say to me me is right. right. Your word word is truth. truth. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.